Ranch. Welcome to Saturday's Ranch. So I'm going to move on to getting my rear sprocket installed and uh, my brakes installed on the rear wheel and everything. So uh, with these these sprockets, um, the stock sprocket comes with uh, these, so they come with these drive pins and then they're, they're pressed in uh, on these things. I mean, some people have a hard time figuring how to get them off and I did too, I had to ask, but you have to punch them out. So I'm just using a little bit of heat to, you can see I've already got two off um, here. So I just set up on my bench here and uh, and uh, I got this uh, I got this thing going here. So what I'm doing is you, I put the bolts on just to protect the heads a bit there, so you could see that, so that and so I'm not smashing directly on the head of the the drive pin. So that's just in there, and then I'm just using a heat gun here. So I'm just using heat gun to heat that up, and just. And then I'm just using this, you could probably hit it right on the, the bolt here, but I'm just using this piece of plastic just as a, just to protect everything, and then I'm just smashing it out. So you can see that's already recessed, and my towel there is catching everything, and that will pop right out. So we'll get this going, uh, install these pins into my new sprocket, and then uh, we'll get the brakes going. Alright guys, moving on with the build here. I'm going to move on to the brakes and tr hopefully get these wheels assembled. There shouldn't be much to this. Um, I have a bunch of new parts here. I got a bunch of new cotter pins. So that's cool. I got some new a new rubber cushion that just sits on the end here. And um, I got new brake pads. So that's pretty cool. These groove brake pads here. Um, uh, I just read up, up a, bit, a little bit about these. They just help with cooling. Um, so, you know, I thought I'd give them a, give them a shot. They're... Uh, they look pretty cool. I also, um, I guess, help stopping power because of the grooves here. So there's extra friction, uh, not just a flat pad. So there's something, there's little ridges to grab onto. So a little bit of increased stopping power, uh, which is going to be good. Again, uh, these are just excellent, excellent tools to have. Um, go, go look up a, like a local Honda dealership. I got these from a local dealer, uh, my local dealership. If you just go, uh, just Google search a, a local Honda dealership, and uh, they should have a part fiche or a part fish. Uh, some people um, uh, pronounce them. I've even heard people pronounce them as part fish. But uh, you've seen these all over my wall. And what I do is I go through with a pen and a and a highlighter, and I just highlight the number and stuff uh, for the various parts. So then when I'm sitting here in the garage and I have like a bag that has a number on it, um, like I've already gone through and written what it is, but I just, like I know exactly, I go through and I see, okay, I need number, uh, you know, 20150 or whatever. So then I have that, I know I have that one right here. So I know that's exactly where it goes. So very handy. I recommend going on. Just look up your local Honda parts uh, and then go through the bike and print these off and do these. So when you buy new parts, it'll just come together really easily. I, this is a pretty much a no-brainer. So I'm just looking at my fish here and then these, these guys sit in this little groove right here. And I'm pretty sure everybody could figure this out. And then I have this. You can see that cleaned up really nice. I took a little, uh, I put that in a little bit of a metal rescue. Um, same thing with the wire brush and WD-40 and then just finish it off with a little auto saw, auto saw that little metal polish stuff and uh, it turned out really nice. So this little guy, just uh, actually this little guy. So this same thing with this one. I uh, just put it, ran it through the metal rescue and it cleaned up really nice. Um, so just to make it look a little better. So this guy just goes in here and then uh, it also comes with new springs here. So, um, so we'll just get those on. Try and get it curled up right around. That looks pretty good to me. And just make sure that is home. That looks pretty good to me. So those are all nice and installed. 
looking pretty fresh. Nice little uh, brake panel here, it's ready to go. And then for the bottom bracket here, um, this guy, little T-shaped bolt here, that just fits, on, that goes, that T-shaped bolt goes on the back, so that prevents it from, you can see how that works, it prevents it from turning here. So when you apply the brakes and it pushes this, this bolt attaches to like a, like an arm, it's like your brake arm, it just stops this from rotating on the bike. So I'm just going to turn it over, put it there for now. I do have some new parts, so it, there is a rubber, a little rubber cushion there, and a, and a washer, and a bolt, and there's this uh, cotter pin here. So you know what I'm going to do first is uh, get my washer on here with my cotter pin. So this little washer sits on here, like that, and then there's a little cotter pin. Here's the number for that, just in case you need it. Probably reuse your old one, but it's always best to. It's just, these are your brakes, right? You you don't want them to fail. So any chance that you can have to prevent them from failing, please do it. So this is going to go in from the outside in. So that's good. So that goes from outside in. So that just keeps this from keeps these pads in place. This is a good safety measure. So you could see that there, looking pretty good. So that's not going to go anywhere now. So that just all comes. So the rubber cushion goes first, and then the washer on top of that. But what I'm going to do is just, and then there's a cotter pin that sits in there, and um, that's this guy here. But I'm gonna leave that until I uh, until I assemble my this my wheel, because uh, that'll be the last thing that I put the uh, I connect the arm to the body of the bike. So this that'll keep this from spinning. I'll leave that off for now. So that's good. This is uh, so all came together pretty easy. And uh, the next thing I gotta do is just uh, replace this a dust seal that goes on the end of this arm here, um, right before this guy goes on. I might have to order that because I have I have my old one, but it's not in the best shape here. So again, you can see this cleaned up really nice. I cleaned the bolt, I cleaned all this stuff. So I went through with the wire wheel, and this will just sit on the end of this. So that's looking pretty good. I think I'm just gonna stop there um, because I don't have my brakes and everything. My wheel, I'll put I'll put this arm on once I get the panel onto the wheel. And then also we'll finish up this part when I go to install the arms. So the brakes are looking good. They're sitting in there pretty nicely. That was really easy. And um, we'll move on to try and get these. I'll try and get the front wheel uh, built up. I got to put the speedo and the um, disc brake onto that. And then put this into the rear rear wheel. But I can't wait to show you guys the new the tires on, on the rim. They're looking pretty sweet. So I'm going to show you guys those now. All right, guys. So we're moving on to the front wheel here. We're going to try and get the speedo and the brake disc installed on the front wheel. I'd like to introduce you to my sweet new wheels. Look at these bad boys. Got the rubbers installed on these and these are Avon Road Riders and they are looking really nice on the rim. I'm really excited to see that come together. And I went ahead um, and I painted the letters. I wanted to give it a nice like race sort of uh, inspired feel and I just thought that the white letters on the black tire would look really rad and uh, it actually looks pretty sweet. So I'm really excited to have that. And what I used here was an oil-based paint Sharpie. So it's a paint Sharpie. It's actually like an oil-based paint. I used a fine tip uh, on that, on the letters here. And I just, the raised letters here, I just gone ahead and care, very carefully painted. So you could see that up close and I think they turned out really nice. Um, you could see the marker did a really good job. It's, it's sort of like really, it actually looks and feels like it was manufacture that way so I really recommend those markers oil based paint sharpie and um, in white and I just went through with the letters and I did a few coats uh, on that you'd want to do two and then uh, let it dry for like 24 hours and then do a third one but um, if you if you take your time with it let it dry and then do do a few coats it'll turn out really nice 
So what we're going to go ahead and do right now is actually we're going to start on this side and we're just going to install the speedo mechanism here on the side and I've gone ahead and already cleaned up all this stuff um, all these parts are really nice and clean I went through the uh, bolts I did the same thing that I've been doing with everything a um, little metal rescue and uh, polished it up with the wire wheel and the WD-40 cleaned up the threads really nice and um, this is all ready to go so there's like an o-ring right here and I'm um, just referencing my fiche um, it's a little o-ring I went ahead and bought a new a new o-ring for that so this is the old one um, it's good to replace these so uh, here's the number for that just in case you're interested so I'm just gonna put a little grease on there grease up the just make sure it doesn't roll I'm gonna start with this one first the paint is just giving me a little bit of problem so what I'm, what I'm gonna do is just file around the outside of that just a little bit just to remove some of that paint I know you spend so much money on paint don't you it's probably I probably in retrospect shouldn't have painted that in the first place but it's a little too late for that now <sighs> same thing with the bore on the, the disc so just lining up my bolts and that's going on a lot better now so you can see that it is sitting there a lot nicer so I want to comment on the brake rotor here I know a lot of guys put like cool little like they drill out their rotors and stuff I thought about doing that and I still might um, I watched a few engineering videos and when you drill holes in it it actually kind of wears this down easily because um, the heat doesn't know where to escape when you have holes in your brake rotor. It kind of it kind of uh, makes it more a little a little more susceptible to cracking. So this rotor will last maybe you're gonna take the lifespan out of your rotor when you when you drill into it. Yeah, it does look cool, and I might still do it just for looks. But it's not very functional, and it actually breaks down your rotor way quicker because it it, it is more prone to cracking. So for now, we're just going to put this on. So that'll keep these from sinking back through. And there's definitely a torque spec for this. I got to look that up. I still need to put the speedo mechanism and the bolt through but I also have to put the dust seal cover back on this so I'm just gonna grease this thread up because these threads are like super dry start getting this in place and I don't have a tool for that so I'm gonna have to improvise here what I'm gonna use I'm just gonna use this punch I'll probably use a skinnier one too actually so this is really good. I'm just using a punch to help me turn this bad boy into place. So I'm just sticking the punch into the groove and just, you could see that it's just sliding. It's just turning basically. So this is working out good. So I'm just going to get this nice and snug. So that's pretty snug. And then what I need to do is, um, there's two indents on the, you know, I'll try to lift it up, but there's like two indents right here and here wait I guess what you're supposed to do is just get a like a punch like this and just take your hammer and just kind of like punch it so it kind of makes like a groove and it doesn't it helps it not turn so kind of keeps that in place it kind of locks it in place there so what I'm gonna do right now is just that's pretty snug and I'm just gonna take it and you'll see the two group the two indents here and I'm just gonna put it on there give it a little punch and I guess also what that does too is if so now I have a marking on the wheel so um, if this starts to back off I'll know that it's it's not aligned anymore and I'll know that it's that I need to kind of tighten it up so that's good so that's all in place I do need to uh, bend those uh, 
washing locking tabs over again but I'll do that in a sec first I'll just get the bolt through so I have my axle bolt here I'm gonna get some grease on it you know I like to grease up a good pull from now and then you if you know me if you've been following the build I've greased up a few poles during this build so I'm just gonna slide through put the so I have to put this through this the speedo mechanism I'll just get that there the hub here and then there's this little spacer here you could see that and that sits inside the dust seal like that and then this guy goes on the end here I'm gonna stick like a screwdriver through there just so I can have some leverage and then on this side, I'm just gonna use my ratchet and just tighten it up. Okay, well, I don't remember that moving before, but is that normal, guys? Tell me, is that supposed to move in and out like that? I know, a little bit nervous about that. Okay, well, we got this in for now, and uh, we're trying to get this on the bike here. I'm going to just move on to the rear wheel. I have to finish the, I have to install the sprocket onto that, and so we'll just put this aside for now. All right, moving on to the rear wheel now. Same thing with this bad boy. Just going to get a punch and just make sure this is nice and tight. Looks good to me, and there's the same thing, the indent. So I'm just going to go ahead punch that. Now I just have to get my sprocket and everything and we'll get this installed. Alright guys, all set up to do my sprocket install here. You can see my new sprocket here in the middle and this is my old stock sprocket here. So basically I went ahead and ordered a new sprocket. It's a 520 conversion so I'm doing a 520 conversion on this, the chain which means it's lighter and it has a it's a thinner chain you could see the stock sprocket compared to the the new sprocket here this is a 520 sprocket over here this is a 530 I believe stock and it's way lighter it's a titanium uh, metal it's made out of titanium it's super light super strong and you could see here where they've removed some of the material just to make it lighter and this thing is feather light so it's basically just uh, Again, going with the race inspired build, just a, a lighter chain, the 520 conversion you want. If you're doing a 520 ch chain conversion, you need a 520 chain, you need a 520 uh, rear and front sprocket. So make sure uh, you do your research on that. Um, so this is a 520 rear sprocket. It's a beautiful sprocket. I really like it. And um, you can see here it's just uh, been painted black and it's um it's nice titanium it's super strong this is going to be pretty sweet so also what i've gone ahead and done is just added two teeth to the rear sprocket um you can look up your gear ratios online just kind of google it for a brief explanation i'll just try and explain what i from what i understand it is that uh, your gear ratios is just the ratio between the front and rear gear uh, sorry sprocket so um and that's going to be your gearing ratio so the stock sprocket had 36 teeth. I've gone ahead and added two to the rear sprocket. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase my acceleration. So from stopping, it's going to give it a little, it's going to make it a little easier for this bike to get off the line. And uh, the reason I did that, you can, and you can even see here, you can see that it's a little bigger. It's a little larger than the stock sprocket. So all that's really going to do is, um, is give it a nice acceleration and the reason I wanted to do that is because because of the large lift uh, the large lift cam I feel like my bike's gonna be clunky at low revving speeds and so I just wanted to give it a light gearing ratio just so that it could get off the line a little quicker so when I'm booting around the city it, um, it's not so sluggish and this is just for my particular application you might find that you want it um, better gearing for when you're at higher revs and you could just go ahead and uh, and get less teeth or there's all sorts of things you can do but this for my particular application I've gone ahead added two teeth here so it's a 38 tooth and um, 
I think this is going to really help out on the acceleration side. So we're just going to go ahead and install the drive pins on this. Because it's a thinner sprocket, um, the drive pin is sitting in um, is sitting into the sprocket, and it's exposing more of material here on on the drive pin. So I've gone ahead and, and just got a couple uh, washers just to make up that space. And so we're just going to go ahead and, and install those now. And you could see here, uh, this is the drive pin that I pulled out. You saw me pull these out before. They cleaned up really nicely. So I've gone ahead and cleaned everything out. I have everything ready on the side here. And we're just going to get this installed. So the way that this goes is um, this T shape kind of fits in the in this groove. You could see some material has been removed from the sprocket right here. And that is just to prevent this from turning basically. So just a safety measure from uh, helping that not to back anything out while this is in rotation. So I'm going to go ahead and get this going right now. So the next thing I want to put on is my, um, there's this little plate here. This is basically, I think it's a safety measure mostly just to make sure that the chain, uh, if it falls off, it gets caught there maybe. I'm not too sure, but this is a, this little plate here goes on next. I have my washer here. Um, so I have just a, lo a lock washer and just like a normal washer just to make up some space. It's a tight squeeze on this, but um, I'll fit over that. Once those two are in place, you need to put the locking tab, the locking tab washer in place and then the bolt goes on. I've gone ahead and greased up the thread just a little bit. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side and then we'll get it on the on the rear wheel. Okay, so you can see I've installed the dry pins um, with the onto the sprocket here, the new sprocket. It's looking pretty sweet. I've got the side plate on. The locking tabs, I'm just going to get this in place first and then bend those up. So this just slides into these little cushions here, obviously. And I've um, already, already gone ahead and tightened this up. I punched in this, the tab or punched in the little dust seal here um, like I did on the front one. And it's just all good to go. So this should slide right in, hopefully. There we go. And I just want to make sure that's seated. Just want to make sure it's even all the way around. And the next thing to go on is this little ring here. And then that's sort of like a big washer for your, this huge ass circlip. So this big ass circlip goes on next. Just grab my circlip pliers and we'll get that on. There we go. So don't like that. Now we have a new problem. So this is a whole lot of fun, this one. So now that because of the sprocket is so thin, this this part here is loose. It should be sitting right up against this uh circlip here and it's not so I'm gonna have to figure this out I might have to put the washers out behind it this is gonna take a little more thinking than I thought so I just want to show you guys a little conundrum I'm having with the rear sprocket install so there's this little ring here and there's this circlip that ring is really loose and that is no good because what that means is that this sprocket is can come out of this can come out a little bit. You can see it's loose. Sorry for the shaky camera, but so that's a real problem. So I need some kind of spacer in between the circlip and this ring right here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to get some advice from someone. If I don't figure out in this video, I uh, do apologize. I will try and figure this out. So if you guys know, if you guys done a, a rear sprocket 520 conversion, and uh, I'm missing something here. Is there some kind of spacer that you need? Um, please let me know in the comments below. But this is as far as I'm going to take this rear wheel for now. I'm not going to bend these tabs up because I'm going to have to take this off and figure out what I'm going to put in to what I'm going to put in place 
to make up the extra space because this sprocket again is thinner than my stock. Alright guys, I think that's going to wrap up this edition of Saturday's Wrench. Thanks for tuning in. And we got the wheels all built up. I'm still having an issue with that rear wheel. I'm going to get that looked at and uh, it's just a little bit loose and I don't think that's very safe. So if you have any comments for me, please leave them. Please message me if you have any advice for that conversion there. Please subscribe to the channel, like the videos, spread the word. And until next time guys, keep on wrenching, get out there, do those projects. We'll see you again in another episode of Saturday's Wrench.